I thank the uh, chairman for hosting this very timely hearing. And um, I would like to ask unanimous consent to submit a 31 second video produced by the Asian Americans Advancing Justice Atlanta organization regarding violence against members of the AAIP community, along with a letter uh, asking for a community-based response to the violence in Atlanta, which is dated March 18th, 2021, and is signed by multiple Asian American community groups uh, in my district for the record. Unanimous consent is granted. Ms. Garcia, Ms. Ross, it's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my heart cries tears of sorrow and solidarity with the families of those in a mass murder in Atlanta. With all the advice I left with feelings of terror of what might happen next to them, their families, and their AIP friends. Whether the massacre in Atlanta was sex based or race based, it was hate based and directed at. Asian women, no question about it. If genocide against Native Americans and slavery are our nation's original sin, then harassment and violence against Asian Americans is its progeny. As Georgia State Senator Michelle All presciently said on Monday, this recent violence against Asian Americans is, is a new chapter in a very old story. The correlation between the rise of xenophobic and racist rhetoric by President Trump and his Republican Party supporters and the dramatic and alarming rise in violence against Asian Americans is not coincidental. It is an unfortunate and calculated result, which is open season on Asian Americans in this country. And when folks on this committee talk about chai comms, what they're doing is they're using a ethnic, they're using stereotypes against any people. And I resent it. As a black man in America, I understand what it's like to be targeted because of how you look. I understand how terrible it is to be viewed by your fellow citizens as other in a nation that prides itself supposedly on being the melting pot of the world. America, it's time to admit that we have a problem. It's time to take affirmative action to correct that problem. And I look forward to uh, a time where we can banish hate and replace it with love in this country. And with that, I'd like to um, ask you, Mr. Yang, uh, about the fact that healthcare workers have specifically suffered disproportionately during the pandemic. How have Asian American healthcare workers been impacted by discrimination and violence over the last year, particularly those involved in the healthcare industry specifically? Thank you very much for that question, and thank you first for lifting up the work that is being done in Atlanta by our community groups there, because that is vital, it is important. And uh, and with respect to the healthcare workers in particular, I, that those are the essential frontline workers that we talk about, the people that are putting their health at risk to serve our entire country, not just Asian Americans, but to serve our entire country. And both Ms. Clark Carney as well as myself, when we look at the incidents that we have coming in, we could cite to so many examples of healthcare workers getting shunned, getting spit, getting coughed on, or statements saying that we don't want them to treat us. And, and so it has had both a mental toll as well as in some cases a physical toll. If I might, I do want to go back to one other piece with respect to the community-based response that we're talking about, which is public safety is not the same thing as law enforcement. Yes, we absolutely need public safety, but we can reimagine it in a way that we're not putting sole reliance on law enforcement when we don't, oftentimes our communities don't trust that vehicle. Thank you. Thank you. This hearing is not about defunding the police either. And uh, does violence and dis how does 
violence and discrimination affect the mental health of members of the AAIP community collectively? If the question is directed to me, it's clear. It affects our entire community. If you ask any of your Asian American friends right now, they will say that this is on their minds. And so one thing I would urge people to do in this moment is to reach out to your friends, reach out to your community, and make sure that they feel seen, they feel heard, and they feel protected. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kim, has the government provided enough support to Asian American healthcare workers? And what role do you see Congress playing in addressing these concerns and providing more support to Asian American health care and other frontline workers? Well, thank you for the question. I think, uh, you know, as it pertains to health care workers, uh, the thing that I find most anecdotally is that many of them are experience experiencing bigotry and hate, even as they're health trying to help people fighting this virus. Uh, I think the ways that we can support them as as friends and pe members of our community is is the ways that is some of the ways that we have. You know, we've seen people, you know, uh, play music for them at seven o'clock and clap for them. But the ways that our government can help is really just to support the community at large. And I think those frontline workers are also members of the AAPI community. They may be at work. Uh, helping people, but they go home and they're still they're they're scared to go home the same way the rest of us are. And so uh, I encourage us all to think about the frontline workers as part of the larger community. And these two bills that are before the the committee right now will help all AAPIs. Thank you, Professor Cole Carney. How has the uh, what is the correlation between the rhetoric of the Trump administration? and the rise in violence against uh, AAIPs. Thank you, Congressman, for your question. We know from a study that we did, <clears throat> excuse me, in the fall that actually uh, over 700 of the incidents reported to stop AAPI hate of the 2,500 we had received at that point um, actually correlated to comments um, that were made about uh, China as the China virus, the Wuhan virus, and Kung flu, and similar comments that were made about sending people back to their country. So we know that, in fact, comments like that have absolutely resulted in hate incidents being perpetrated against our community members. And we know that because the data shows it. And if I may add, too, that uh, just in terms of some of the resources um, that can be provided, um, I think local communities, as you have pointed out, could very much benefit from um, added funding and an infrastructure to provide support for our community members. Thank, Thank you. you. I want to make it clear that it's not just white folks who are acting against AAIPs, it's other <laughs> communities, including Black people. And I want to issue a uh, challenge to all communities to be aware of the fact that our brothers and sisters in the AAIP community are, are particularly targeted right now, and we need to embrace them with love and not contribute to the hate that is enveloping uh, them. And with that, I yield back. 